geez, they are just stacked. Better run about 50 feet out. Should be right behind it. Yep, you bet. That's a good fish. This is why we came here right here. There you go. There you go. Back on the board right away on day two. Didn't take long, actually still <laughs> kind of like yesterday, just getting some stuff set up. We are back out day two, super cold. Um, it was like, I think I saw 10 degrees yeah. at the lowest this morning. <laughs> Stuff's freezing up. Not 100% sure what the theme of this video is going to be yet. We'll just kind of see what the day brings. Sometimes I don't like to have necessarily a theme because I want to just do whatever the fish are dictating, kind of give you some information on that. But we're back out on Green Bay with Warren Fisher. We got a wicked snowstorm coming, so I'm gonna have to head back a little earlier actually than anticipated, but we're gonna make it happen while we can. Hopefully get some sweet side imaging shots, live scope footage, all that kind of good stuff and give you some tips and tricks along the way. There's some on the side imaging, couple there. And there we go. Not super big, but we got the right color. Solid fish. There we go, fish number two for the day. Another solid fish. That's another thing about, you know, even if you're not catching the giants like you do often, a lot of these fish are just such good quality. And a fish like that, you can just see how thick that was. And this rip and wrap bite is so fun. You know, you're popping, popping. I've been trying a few different things. I've been doing some short little pops here and there, been doing some little bit longer strokes. That one's just kind of your very midline, just a little pop, a little pop, and you know, right when you pick it up, that fish is there, and it's just such a fun way to fish. And so we're kind of in the same pattern. Um, we're just getting some screen time, driving around. I'll throw up some screenshots again of what it's gonna look like on the side imaging. We're not seeing any of the big, big groups yet today. We're seeing them a little more scattered, but they're kind of scattered over quite a bit, quite a few areas. So once we kind of found an area that we could do a pretty good drift, we're actually just fan casting with the live scope, kind of working through here as we drift, as we see fish, because it's been really hard to follow these fish. They're moving so much. So being able to stay on these fish is challenging, but if we can kind of pan around, there's so many fish spread out that we can kind of pan around, cast as we see them on the live scope and just be very efficient. As far as that goes, being able to make a pass, go up wind, um, take another pass, and then just continue casting on these fish as we come across them on these drifts. Should be pretty close to those things. Look at that. Kind of net one handy because I want to get the shot on the GoPro of net net. Oh. And we came off right at there. Oh my gosh, it's a blimp. So you can tell, you know, when you get fish like this and they get into that upper 20s, into that 30 inch range, how massive these things get. They are just built different. When you catch a fish like that and it looks so fat. <laughs> Another thing we've been doing in order to kind of get the most efficient drifts with these is we're just driving around and kind of marking some waypoints when we're seeing these fish on side imaging so you can kind of get an idea of where the biggest concentration of fish are. Obviously these things are moving a ton but when you can have multiple groups in a certain area you can kind of pinpoint your drift where you're going to go upwind of these fish, drift back down towards them so you have all your waypoints you can kind of drift over those because as there's many schools of fish working around and your boat is drifting towards them you're going to be able to come across multiple of these fish whether they're scattered in ones, twos, here and there or if they're in a group of five or 10 15 it's like some of the bigger groups that we've seen so it's just an efficient way to be able to come across the most amount of fish as possible while still oh there's a bunch of fish on the uh a uh, big group of fish we'll get to that later because there is a bunch of fish about 70 feet out I'm trying to find the best place to pitch that i'm not getting caught up with you yeah, that's definitely the groups that we're looking for. Like I said, this has just been a group that's kind of cruising around. And now we kind of have drifted across and been able to kind of come across them here, see if we can't get our baits right in the mix of them and capitalize. There we go. There we go. Thing was just following for a long time. Another solid one. Smoked her. That's another plump fish. Man, these things are just plump. <laughs> now they're just big. Whoa, if I can hold them. Big belly on that thing. These things are just 
built so different, which is so much fun, especially when you're getting into a little bit nicer ones like this. And obviously there's definitely bigger, but being in something like that, I'm not gonna complain. Look at the bellies on those things. Real quick, I'm gonna talk setups. Um, you know, I don't think it's any secret on Green Bay that a lot of times you're working uh, some ripping wraps. Purple and gold is what this one is. This is on the 6.9 medium fast action from Elliott. Uh, this is in their performance handle like that. And is on the Carbon X2 2000 from PC Fun. Another thing that we have been doing, Warren's been doing it more, is using a hair jig, trying to slow things down just a little bit. Another thing with that 2000 size reel, 3000 size reel, they both work very well out here because we're drifting, we're casting um, with the wind to our backs and then we're drifting towards our bait. So you want that line pickup because as you're drifting towards it, you're gonna have to pick up that line pretty quickly. So that 2000, even up to that 3000 size works very good for kind of getting that nice, even retrieve. I'm running that on a 10 pound braid and I have a 10 pound fluorocarbon lead Warren likes to go up to a 12 pound which is a great idea because when you're casting these baits that little bit thicker line like that can help kind of reduce some of the line twists can help kind of reduce some of those when you're ripping wraps getting tangled up especially when you're throwing these things around all day making lots of casts ripping around down there um, having that little bit more firm line can really help to reduce some of those they are kind of following oh god yeah right underneath the boat yeah, I got that one to chase right underneath, and he just wouldn't eat. Hey, look good for that little bit that it came up. That's a good fish. Oh, that's a plumper one. That thing is fat. <laughs> that is a, jeez. Let's show that real quick. Just chomp that thing. Wow. That is awesome. You bet, there it is. Look at the belly on that thing. Turn it just a touch this way, tail this way, so we can get some light on it. There we go. That's why you come to Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> that is just a fat fish. This time of year, these fish are so stinking thick. And that is why you book with Warren <laughs> right here. And if you've seen any of his pictures, you know they get even bigger. There she goes. Sweet. That felt good. Nice <laughs> fish so much fun but those are definitely you know we're in march right now so those are those big spawners and so if you're coming over here um, take care of these fish you know when they get them swallowed like that being careful around those gills making sure you're not damaging those fish nice thing is this cold water shallow water these fish are very healthy and they're very easy to get in and out quickly just be mindful of the fishery because if we aren't as anglers responsible you know obviously there's a lot of talk about live scope a lot of talk about forward facing sonars that kind of stuff going on but bottom line is the responsibility lies with us as the anglers because no matter what technology is or no, what what technology does it always comes back to how we are doing with our fish how we are handling our fish and how we are harvesting our fish being selective with that so just a quick little side note because these fish we want to be able to come back and do this for years to come and so taking care of those fish is a big part of that so warren caught that one on this color right here i don't know what i don't know any of the names of these ripping wraps i'm not very good with my technicalities on some of these baits but that was the color that he was using i'm using something very similar um, one thing that warren told me and i have heard it from a lot of people and i don't think it's any huge surprise to anyone but that purple goldish um, browns those are all very effective out here so Definitely stock up on a lot of that. At least one. I got on the back side of them at least. Just if it's gonna get close enough where you can see it. Yep. My God. And the sandwich. sandwich. You bet. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, nets. Not a giant, but fun to uh, get back into one. I knew I was in the right direction of them, I just wasn't sure. It's actually not too bad. Just moved to another new area here. Saw a pile of fish. Started moving back on them and almost nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Don't know where those fish went. We, they were on both sides of the side imaging. I'll show you that screenshot. Worked through a little bit. Just seeing one here, one there now. Uh, but got that one to chase. I knew I was right in line with it and just if it was gonna be in the mood and sure enough, picked it up, ate it right off bottom. That's two. Yep. 
three, four. One of these I got a bite. Come on. Started following. Let it sit. Yep, he wanted it just sitting there. <laughs> not big, not big. Oh, look at all the warts on this thing. Oh yeah, they get warty. Oh my gosh. Nice color on that one. Yeah. Ew, dude. <laughs> What is that? Oh, oh no, they're falling they off in the boat. <laughs> Gross. I don't even know. It's like cheese grating them. Oh no. <laughs> Multiple warts. This is just, oh, it's so gross to even touch. You can just see all those warts on it. Oh man, try to get it in the light a little more. That thing just wanted it sitting right on bottom. Whoa. I think you could see that on the live scope, but. I was following it back, following it back, so I was like, I'm just gonna let it sit. I think I even said that. And then sure enough, pick it up and it was there. Just being able to see, that's what's nice about the live scope, while well, you don't need it. Being able to kind of read the mood of those fish. And honestly, then there's a lesson for me of like, maybe I should be doing that a little bit more, of letting that thing sit on bottom and seeing if they just scoop it up like that. And I know Warren says he does that every once in a while where he'll just let it sit. And sometimes that's what triggers these things to go. And you can see when they're so tight to bottom like this, you can see them on the live scope. You know, obviously that kind of tells you they're maybe in a little bit less active mood. They're not up just feeding like crazy. So maybe letting that thing sit a little bit more uh, might trigger a few more bites here too. Oh, there he is. <laughs> That's awesome. I hope, I hope somehow some audio got that. It's a decent fish. Oh, yeah. oh did I nose him? Oh, I almost lost him. That's actually a better fish than I thought right away. That's funny. I don't know if you could hear the audio on that, but he was just saying, come on, eat. I haven't caught a fish in an hour. In an hour, and then thump. Come on, eat. Calling it like, oh, there he is. <laughs> you bet. Gonna be a little hard lighting. It's kind of bright behind us, but another solid fish. You know, it's starting to get to be a, a better day when it's like, oh, yeah, another mid 20s. Like, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> this thing thought it was smaller when it was out there. And as we got a close get in the nets, like, dang, that's a sweet fish. Just those bellies on these things are so awesome. Just love seeing these big fish like that swim away. 50. Mm-hmm. Yep. Looks like a decent one too, but there's a lot a lot of uh Yeah. That was pretty sweet. Was a good one. Felt decent, it looked that's recording, that's recording. Oh yeah, that's a decent fish. That's a decent fish. You bet. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Oh my gosh. That is way bigger than I thought right away. Oh, this is why we come here, right here. Honestly, this is my last day. It's a short day and I am gonna have a tough time leaving. So that means, you should come on over, book with Warren, catch fish like this, and take my place because I wish I could stay here for many more days. <laughs> We're gonna grab a quick pick and then we're gonna get this thing back in the water, make sure it swims way healthy. Oh, look at that beautiful fish. That is what you come here for right there. Awesome. The coolest snout. <laughs> you bet. So I don't know if it's gonna, you're gonna be able to tell, but it's been a little bit of a grind. We've been seeing a ton of fish. We've been casting on a ton of fish and getting our baits in front of a lot of fish. And we have, like I said, absolutely had to work hard. So it feels so good to be able to put one of those fish in the boat because I missed one that was pretty decent yesterday. Warren missed one that was pretty decent. We just haven't capitalized on some of the bites that we've gotten. And it truly just goes to show the body of water that we're on, the kind of guide that Warren is because even when this would be considered a tough bite, most other places, this is a bad day you know so it just shows how good the fishing can be and it truly is only going to get better from here getting closer to spawn so you know i would honestly reach out to him soon get booked up if he has any days for you uh because it's only going to get better here oh 
I'm rambling on, but it just feels good to get that fish in the boat.